All right, guys, this episode is going to be fantastic. I've got a, a friend of mine here, and, and if you have ever heard me say that you have a spiritual gift, um, this friend has a spiritual gift, a powerful spiritual gift, and one that if you've ever suffered with, you know, anxiety or any sort of mental disorder, you know, half of the time, I believe what that is, is that your gift and your soul and your the truest essence of who you are is, well, you in the 3D world don't know how to tie that all in. And I think this is a perfect example of that. I want to introduce you to my friend, Daniel Raphael. Daniel, how are you, man? It's so good to be here. It's good to have you here, man. It's, it's, we, we haven't actually, I haven't seen you in a couple of months, yeah. which sucks. That's not cool, but that's okay. Um, I was asking you before we got started how we met and you were kind of like sharing that story. Yeah, we actually met at one of my dream porting retreats. We had a big castle in uh, Temecula. Yeah. And uh, I just felt your energy right away. And I invited you to give a talk, even though I just met you because I just felt like you had, and it, it just like blew everyone away the the codes on business and manifesting and just like anchoring it in. I remember that. Yeah. I, I remember, are we allowed to say who was there or is that not cool? Or? There, was a, there was some A-list celebrities there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some pretty big names there. <laughs> but no, but I thought it was, I thought it was pretty cool that like everybody was just chill and it was just a good like three days on just you know tapping into our intuition and our psychic abilities yeah yeah and so i want to ask you about that because i i know a little bit about your story and i know that there's a lot of people that may suffer with some of the things that you suffered with so talk to us about your story and how you unraveled your spiritual gift i'd love to i mean when i was born i was i was born somewhat awake so i was psychic i could do all sorts of things that most people think are supernatural but that we all have and when i was starting before five i started shutting down and i became uh deeply depressed had so much social anxiety i could not even go to a grocery store i was just freaking out couldn't be myself stopped expressing my desires didn't even know how to make eye contact and you know had a dozen different mental emotional disorders um by the time i was you know in high school really? so it just kept going down down downhill so, so I want to, I want to, I want to break this apart because I, I really feel like a lot of people, what the system does to people like that is just shove them with medication and gives them some sort of like a, you know, bipolar or, or ADHD or, you know, wh whatever the case may be. And yet here you are, who's someone who works with some of the top humans on the planet. Right. And so I, I want to really dive deep here. When you said you were awake, what, what, what does that mean? basically i could read people's minds you know just an example like four years old i was at a salon and i met a stranger a woman and she was smoking and i in fluent french i convinced her to quit smoking and why she was smoking and how it was affecting the people around her and she came back later a few days later and you know next time we saw her and said thank you so much like i quit smoking so you know i was already just expressing these deep things coming through and uh you know all sorts of abilities that that were there and you know like i said i don't feel like i'm special i feel like we all have that absolutely and um when you're initiated in different tribes and it's very rare now these days um and i've studied with them you know they they teach children this like how to astral travel how to do all sorts of things and um that's what i'm all about is bringing it back i love that and it was very hard because i wasn't you know i had those gifts but i, I wasn't taught how to manage my energy how to not take on other people's energies and then extreme amount of abuse all these toxins bombarded me and I started just losing, you know, everything, like who I was. And um, I just started shutting myself down more and more and more to try to fit in. Because Daniel, the truth is when people suffer with this, the truth is, is that like, you know who you are. You always knew who you were. It's just there wasn't a safe container for you to explore that. I just thought of X-Men. You know the movie yeah, X-Men? It's, it. it's, it's literally like X-Men. It's yeah. like, you know, we really all are X-Men. We all have powerful spiritual capacities, giftings, way to heal, way to connect. And yet, like, you know, all of these toxins and all of these uh, rules and laws that are here in the 3D world, for somebody like you who was awake from birth, basically, right? It took me, my, my work with plant medicine to awaken. You know, that must have been pretty daunting, like to the point that you said, you know, you had so much social anxiety, you couldn't even go to a grocery store. What was that like? I was just, if someone laughed in a public place, I thought they were laughing at me. I was so, I was that insecure. So I was just like, 
like, you know, having thousands of data inputs, like, and trying to protect myself, trying to control them. And I went crazy, you know, more and more because I just felt less and less secure about myself. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know who I was. And I, you know, I started trying to fit in and wanted to be normal. But of course I was so different in yeah, so many yeah, ways yeah. that it just took all my RAM, my processing to try to be normal. It still didn't work. I was miserable and didn't even want to live anymore at some point. But that was what I was spending all my energy on. Wow. So, so let's, so let's touch on this. Cause again, this is something that I think a lot of human beings struggle with. And, and I'm going to ask all of you guys, if you know someone who struggles with some of this stuff, like please send them this episode. I don't think I've ever asked you to send anybody an episode, but I think this is a big one because I think that there's a lot of people who end up ending their lives, right? Because they're so confused. What was that part of your life and your journey like? I remember one point, you know, I was going to college. I was still very intelligent. Like I could read a book five minutes before the exam and get the highest grade. But, you know, connecting with a human being, it was horrible. Like I, it felt like they were in a different dimension. Like I felt so dissociated, right? And so I, I just was like in my car, just screaming at the top of my lungs. Like, I just want to break out of this prison. It just felt like I was literally in the maximum security prison. And that's when things shifted around 20 years old. I woke up from a dream and in this dream, it showed me this hill. And it said, if you go to this festival on this date, your life will change forever. And I woke up from this dream and it, it felt like inception. Like it wasn't a dream, you know? And there was, I ended up going, there was tens of thousands of people there. And uh, it was really like not fun at all because I just had so much anxiety times a million from being there. Uh -huh. And then I went with this girl, then we left and she was like, let's go, let's get out of here. And then all of a sudden I saw that hill and there was a, a six foot five man with a sign that said free energy healing. And I didn't know what this was at this point. I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to try it. And in five minutes, you just expanded my energy field. And I felt present for the first time. I felt at peace for the first time, maybe 15 at, at years. At 20 years old? Yeah. What did that feel like? At first, I thought it was enlightened because it was that different. But now I realize this is the very beginning of my spiritual journey, right? It was the first moment. And that's when I started learning energy healing. I started with Reiki. And then I went to India. And I went to Peru and the different shamans. I ended up spending 15 years around the world studying with hundreds of different teachers and masters, uh, primarily to heal myself. But then I started realizing, oh, this is easy. A friend, you know, I can help you with that. You know, um, family, different, different things just start coming through again. And then, you know, all, all of a sudden I'm being flown around to world leaders and royalty and um, billionaires and all sorts of people because it's kind of like the Rubik's Cube analogy. Like they've been trying for 30 years with the top healers and stuff to, and then like, boom, in five minutes, it's transformed. That's right. And so... I feel like I had this huge weight on me my whole life. And I, I thought it was the biggest victim. It's like, life sucks. I'm in hell. And now I see like, wow, this was just the exact weights I needed for my mission. Yeah, I love that. And you know, it's so beautiful that you can say that, Daniel. I want to I want to say two things. Number one, I think that for all of us, when we're on our journey in our lives, you know, some people who have gone through very tough situations when they were younger, you know, if you allow the process to unfold, you can see that the very thing that you went through is the very thing that you needed to go through in order to find your gift, your capacity to help other people. Would you would you agree with that statement? Hundred percent. That's why I believe we're here. Say right. life is a school and That's love right. is the lesson. And everything that happened is preparing you for what you've asked for. Absolutely. And the second thing that I want to bring up is that, you know, I, like like many people, you know, grew up um uh, it's so interesting. I just keep looking at, you know, that, that's my mom right there, by the mm, way. Wow. Yeah. And it's so interesting, but I, I, I grew up in such a, like, um, a, 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 re a religious environment where, you know, people were like, like you were bad people. People like you were like evil or like, you know, you know, this is not true, but I'm going to use the word like demonic or, you know, I bet you for many people, I might be the antichrist now because I, I tell people the truth, you know? It's Congratulations. Like, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy to be called that. <laughs> I'm not the antichrist. I'm the anti-church, right? That's, that's the yeah. difference. But, but, you know, for you, Daniel, it's like, I, I want to tell you this as a brother, like, I'm not cool with a lot of people. Like, I keep my distance with a lot of people, but you, like, there's something about you. Like, I genuinely love, trust is a big thing for me. I obviously respect your giftings when I need advice, like I'll come to you and, 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 and vice versa. We help each other. It's so interesting to me how like, you know, the world and the system austerizes like certain people for their giftings. And, and yet the, my truth is that with somebody like you, like 
I'm more comfortable around you than I am with like most of humans out there. Like, you know, what do you think that's all about? I think, you know, you mentioned X-Men. It's like a lot of people resonate with that because it's kind of like they're, they're gifted, but they were treated like freaks. And a lot of people feel the same, right? And so, you know, that's how I felt. I felt like a freak my whole life. I was told I was a freak a lot of times. Uh, but now it's like, yeah, it's just, we're here to, to share and remind people that the God-given magic that we all have to co-create reality in a more beautiful world. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned the church because, you know, there's so much rabbit holes we can go in there, but I was so curious. It's like, I, I studied, you know, from shamans, from ancient cultures, and actually found these ancient manuscripts. There's a lot of uh, texts that they took out of the Bible, you know, of course. in 300-ish AD, Emperor Constantine. And I was like, let's check that out. And one of them is actually a protocol to become Christ-like that from Jesus' own words, and it's like, you know, take a gourd, make a water enema, use this magic, use this angel, purify your body, then you purify your emotions, then you purify your mind. And so I actually did this protocol. I, I water fasted for um, over 10 days and it completely transformed my life and brought so many miracles. So I do believe that, you know, Christ was a prophet, yet there's a lot of, you know, control that came after that. And we can actually go to the original teachings and it's all about, you know, not giving your power away and just, it's an inspiration to be like, do this yourself. That's right, absolutely. We're all connected. Become this. Become this. Right, the, the Christ consciousness. The, yeah. The, we, we are taught in religion that the Christ consciousness, for, first off, we don't even understand what Christ consciousness is. We are taught that there was only one Jesus Christ. And, and I believe what Jesus came to do, like you're starting to see nowadays, you know, more often is that, Jesus came to bring the message of love. Jesus came to bring the message of finding yourself, of finding and seeking first the kingdom of God within, right? And um, I believe that's why he was killed. Yeah. It, 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 it wasn't because we're sinners. It, no. No, it's because he told the truth. And they're saying he's the only one because they don't want more of him. Bingo. Oh, bingo, absolutely. And so the truth is, the truth is, is that what religion does is it it stops the story at him yeah because they try to end it the separation bingo because if we all all tap into the energy of the christ consciousness we can't be controlled and the entire universe changes yeah isn't that powerful yes yeah by the way casper make that a damn clip let's 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 shake that's the a world whole up. yeah that's a, yeah, yeah let's shake the world up with that clip yeah. right there yeah so if you've been listening to my podcast for a while you'll know that i'm a strong believer and advocate for plant medicine and its ability to awaken and heal the mind body and soul it's a belief that is deeply rooted in my own personal experience with both ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms and many of you for years have always asked me, you know, Danny, where do I go? Where, who can I trust? And there is only one place I would ever recommend or put my name behind, and that is Reunion. Reunion is a place where you could set yourself free from whatever is holding you back from living the life of your dreams. It's a beachfront, beautiful property that is in Costa Rica. And what I love about it is that it's not for profit. And this is the only thing that they focus on is the preservation and the safe utilization of these beautiful, wonderful medicines. And I only feel comfortable putting my name behind it because I am personal friends and have journeyed with some of the members of the facilitating team. Guys, I'm honored to have aligned myself with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. It's a fund whose purpose is in helping people who don't have the means to experience these medicines and yet have the desire to. And every time one of you books a retreat with Reunion, $100 from every booking is gonna go into this fund and we will be sharing this money with people on a monthly and bi-monthly basis. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when you go to register to experience your own life transformational journey. To find out more, go to reunionexperience.org and get ready. So um, so let's talk about this. I, I haven't told you this. I had an experience and I'd love for you to, you know, I'm going to be jarting, darting around all over the places with you because there's it. so much that I want to ask you about. Um, but I, I had an experience the other day. And I had an experience where, and, and I'm going to share it for the first time here on the podcast, where, you know, I, I, I was, I had a lot of trapped energy inside of me. It was on a Sunday. I was having a hard time sleeping, and um, 
I went to the restroom and on my way back from the restroom, I literally thought, I think I'm going to have to go journey or something because something is stuck inside of me, you know? And, um, and I asked Jen, I said, Jen, you know, could you just put your hands over me? And we have now discovered that like Jen is not only a healer, but definitely my healer, like, like my personalized, like healer. Right. And sure enough, she was just intuitively, she intuitively just placed her hands over my chest and I, I'm start shaking and moving. And, you know, uh, if you had a camera in the room, it looks like I'm having an exorcism, but I'm going into a process, right? I'm going to tell you what happened. And I would love for you to tap in to, 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 to see what happened. But all of a sudden, man, speaking of Jesus, I am literally like carrying the cross. And Daniel, I relived the crucifixion. Like I, I literally felt him. I, I, my eyes are closed. She puts her hands right here. She doesn't know what's going on. She puts her hands right here and I feel where he was like stabbed, you know? And then she puts her hands over my feet and I feel where the nails like were, 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 were in his feet. And I, I had this experience of like reliving what he went through. And it's the craziest thing, Daniel, but ever since then, I'm no longer afraid of speaking about it because I used to be afraid of speaking about the truth that I knew that I had downloaded and experienced because I know a lot of people are not ready for that, you know? Wow. What do you, what do you sense in that? Well, as soon as you said it, I, I felt, you know, as a child, when we're indoctrinated with this religion, it affects us more than we realize, right? There's this term called cruft, which is like, you know, Windows 95, you build an operating system and then they built Windows 98 on top of it, and then Windows 2000. And so it crashes, there's glitches because you don't make a clean start. So because you're doing all this work, it's like going back to some of the core operating system to transmute it so that you can free that part of you because you have to do that in order for, for that to be released. Otherwise there's these protection mechanisms saying, don't do this, you'll get punished or whatever it is. So that's, we need to go back there. That's exactly it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's been interesting for me to see how like that voice, that energy was inside of me. Don't say that because you're gonna get in trouble. Don't say that because you're, and now it's like, it's gone, it's gone. And that Sunday for the first time on Instagram, I just started talking about my experience with religion and you know what I was told to not do. And when I actually did it, how it actually changed my life. And so many people resonated with it. And I was only able to do that after that experience that I had which is really magical. That's huge. Yeah, big time. So I wanna know more about, you said you've been all over the world, right? And for a lot of people, a lot of people are so stuck in fear, they're, they're afraid to travel, they're afraid to go experience, they're afraid to go like really discover. What are your top two or three memories or experiences <laughs> that you've had, you know, from being all over? Oh, no, I mean, the first one that comes up is the cave. I gotta tell you this story, I don't think you know it. And just to track back to my childhood, I was so scared of germs and, insects like i would take a sip of a glass and put it down and then later i'd be like i have to take a new glass like i was so neurotic right and so fast forward to a year ago i uh, you know i heard about these mages in indonesia they can literally teleport they can materialize things out of thin air and so i was like i want to find the best one and i did and uh you know royalty fly to, to meet him government i mean he could do incredible things some of which i'm not even supposed to talk about and i ended up staying with him for a month you, you did tell me, but keep going. A little bit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, he had me put my hands in like near boiling water to like merge with the fire element and like ice cold, like staying in this ice cold pool for like, you know, springs for an hour and doing all sorts of things to like balance the energies and learn about energies. And then he had me go into this cave and this cave is huge. There's, there's branches of this cave that the local government actually blocked off because people would go in it and disappear. And the story is like, they'll either end up like in the ocean, like 30 miles away or you know, there's, there's another cave where they'll end up coming back and they've aged like 50 years. And I'm like, wow, you know, but you know, this is so out of even, even for me, I'm like, this sounds crazy. But like, after seeing, you know, what he can do, it's like, okay. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a crazy cave and there's giant wolf eating spiders and scorpions and cobras that can kill you in this cave. And he said, go in there. And it was like pitch dark. And he put a magic circle around me, just a little magic spell for a few minutes. And he left me all night and I couldn't sleep at all. And there's so much weird stuff going on, both physical and spiritual. Uh, but it was a way to initiate me to realize, okay, you know, no matter what happens in the physical, everything starts in the spiritual realm, right? And this is just like a manifestation key because in, you know, I had this billionaire to tell me like in the 
the 3D world, in the realm of effect, you don't have a lot of power because it's already manifested. Everything starts in the spiritual world. So if you, if you really know how to work it, you start there and that trickles down and, and it's like that protected me, right? I was not touched, even though there was literally a million things all around me, right? Wow. And so that really anchored it in deeper, that trust in, in spirit. And that's how you really manifest is from connecting with that plane first, because that's what's actually in control of this plane. That resonates so much with me because I, I have, I sometimes feel like the most protected human on the planet, you know, but we all are when we can tap into that frequency, you know, and yet, you know, I can understand how like for some people who are living in like crime ridden crime infested areas where there's drugs and all of these things, it's they're, they're tapped into that energy, right? So if somebody was out there watching right now and there's like, wow, like that resonates and it, it may seem, you know, weird or it may seem different, but I believe, like I, I believe in that, right? And I believe that you do creative thing, everything in the spiritual world first, right? Like how could we help them to tap into a, a, a higher frequency, a more loving frequency? I think, you know, recognizing the universal laws because everything, the perspective you hold literally reflects and creates everything in your life. And the more and more I awaken, the more I'm seeing that. So I used to have people make fun of me all the time, right? As an example, or bully me. And now people respect me. I, I just manifest amazing relationships. Every relationship in my life is, wow, it's amazing. And it's really just about your energy field. And you know, back then I was holding on, I was so scared of people making fun of me, so I was attached to it. And then the universe actually loves you so much that it's gonna keep showing you that you're holding on to it so that you can actually break free of it and live your life. And so if you're scared of crime or, or whatever fears you have, people ask me like, how do I release this fear, Daniel? How do I release it? You don't release it, you face it. Mm. You have to just be neutral, you know? And one of this, these other masters that could materialize things out of thin air, she says her first lesson was, imagine a clock and you stay at 12 o'clock. If you can live in, in that neutrality, it dissolves all the karma, it dissolves all the fear because now you could just face it. You're not, it's not controlling you. Because if you try to move and attach to it or run away from it, then it's got its grip on you. And if you just have your awareness and your love there, then it dissolves just from that pure awareness that you already are. So it's about facing your fears. It's like, okay, cool. And then what happens next? What happens next? Right? Then I die. It's like, okay, well, what happens next? And you just follow it till the end. And that's how you dissolve fears and then stop running your life. I love that. I yeah. love that. Because for so many of us, we live in this energy of fear. Yeah. You know? Are there any practices that people could do? I mean, there's so many, and I, I go through this in my school, but you know, one of them is, you know, we each have a guardian angel. And this is actually talked about in ancient texts, both from you know, Christianity, Judaism, um, Tibetan Buddhism, and shamanism. And so I was scared of the dark energy. I was scared of dark spirits and dark forces. It so bad my whole life, more and more. It actually got worse. And then I finally connected. I was um, in a ceremony, I almost died. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I heard about this guardian angel, let me call it. And then I was literally convulsing. People were trying to help me. I was like, I'm, I'm about to die. And I called my guardian angel and it just said, take three deep breaths. And then on the third breath, I completely relaxed and was 100% at peace. And it just guided me out of there and, and freed me of this hell I was in. And uh, you know, they teach you in these ancient texts, it's like you call your guardian angel, it's stronger than any dark force. And you know, there's been a few times where I'm like, whoa, this is, situations are bad. And it just instantly, you know, I, I called on it a minute later, like every, the whole matrix changed. I'm like, oh. How do you find your guardian angel? So I actually have a, a, a simple class on it, but you can just do it yourself. You can just get at peace and, and ask a like, guardian angel, please come to me mm. and start to listen. Uh, but there's, a, there's some meditations that I, I channeled that specifically help you to facilitate that and clear whatever interfering energies or beliefs are in the way so you can easily access that. Yeah. And that's really the first step in some ancient practices like the hermetic tradition because then it's the inner guru, it will guide you the rest of the way through the levels of enlightenment. I love that. Okay, so we have the cave. Yeah. What else? Another story? Another story. Oh, uh, about? Just about your experiences just traveling the world. One more story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what comes through here. Uh, you know, early back when I was uh, starting my awakening journey, I, uh, I met this Taoist master and he could literally move people with his mind. He touched my pineal gland and it like cracked open. Literally, I was like, what's going on? And then he told me to not have any sexual activity for hundred days. So, you know, to build that energy, I went to India 
And then I was still, I still had so many negative thoughts. And finally, you know, I was living in this little hut and I wanted to go to the bathroom. And my, there's this thought, it was like, don't go to the bathroom, it's too far away. And it was like, I was like, all of a sudden I was like, whoa, all these thoughts are just like complete bullshit. And it just was like, and I just decided that moment, like, I'm going to meditate as long as I, as, as long as possible until I just wake up because this is, and I just got really mad. And what I realized is I was repressing my anger and anger can actually move you out into higher energies. And I, I just meditated for three hours. My back was hurting. And I was like, I'm just staying here until I become one with everything. And then it just happened. Wow. And I, I felt oneness and it, it lasted for several days and I literally could feel the ocean and people and it was just the most beautiful thing. And so that was my first taste of, of oneness, mm. which is part of awakening. That's right. And, um, you know, I think that that came through because it's like, if you're in a spot where you're challenged, where you're suffering, where everything seems to be going wrong, use that as fuel. What are you saying no to? Because when you say no to something, it's like, I'm done. Another door opens. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And in many ways, it's like what I've experienced in my journey. It's like another door opens into like, I saw the heart, right? It's like you get it closer and closer and closer and closer to the heart because the heart is what it's oneness is what connects us all. I love that. Yeah. That's what just came through for me. Yeah. How do people learn how to do that? How do people learn how to tap in and receive messages? How did you learn? For you, it was like natural, right? Or, it, you know, well, it was natural when I was a little kid and then it came back. And I remember like this one time, there's this famous CEO and I was like, let me try it. And he gave me 30 names of people, the first names. And I started channeling like, this is his nickname. This person's trying to take advantage of you. And I literally 100% accuracy and it just changed his life. You know, I just trusted it. And I was like, oh, okay, here it is. Um, so there's trainings you can do. Uh, but the number one thing I would say is just realize that you can and that it's already there. And it's just, it's just surrendering, right? It's the balance of feminine and masculine energy. Mm. So what I say is first, you know, I, I use the masculine energy. I just, I'm just like, show me, right? It's like, you got to click on the file, right? You're just in the acoustic field. You're connected to everything. The air we're breathing is not just oxygen and carbon dioxide, but the infinite field of intelligence, the ethers. So I just point, you just like point at it, like show me this person, show me this, right? Show me the situation and you just decide. And most people don't know how to do that, but it's just deciding, just do it, you know? And you can ask how, you know? And I trained with a shaman when he first told me, he's like, okay, go into this woman's body, tell me what's going on with her. And I asked, how do you do that? And he said, don't ask how, just do it. Just do it. And then boom, I was there. So that's the energy. Right? That's the masculine energy and the feminine. Then you're just like a child. You're just like watching a movie. You just, what's the first thing that comes up? You just like start looking around. Just really relaxed and soft. And you start getting all this information. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And every single one of us has the capacity to do that. Everyone's born with it. It's our God given right. And there might be those layers of cruft, right? Physical detox, mental, emotional, right? And that's why the protocols are there to clear it. So if you're having trouble, if you're too in your mind, um, you know, sometimes it could just be a, take a cold plunge and then you could do it. Right. But you know, the more that you clear the cruft out of your life and it's realigning your relationships, like your house, the files on your phone, everything's a constellation related to everything else. So the more you close the tabs, the more easy it is. Then you're like, Whoa, you know, and you might already be psychic. And now you go from like getting occasional messages to seeing, you know, for me, I see entire outlines of like people's souls and their past lives and all, you know, more and more, you know, and it's like, it's just all there instantly. And it's so easy. Beautiful. And so it's just about clearing, you know, we all have this Ferrari. We think we have a shitty car, but it's just, you know, there's mud on the windshield. We haven't changed the oil. Right. It's just taking care of it. And then boom, it's back. Hey guys, before you continue listening, I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of this episode, Athletic Greens. I decided to give AG1 a try because I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, boosts my energy and supports my immune system. Uh, especially for someone like myself that fasts all day. I take it in the morning before starting my day and it makes me feel incredible. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body. It also helps me save an enormous amount of time and it makes my life so much easier with just one scoop in the morning. So it makes it a very seamless and easy daily habit for me. Just one serving of this stuff, AG1, supports my long-term gut health. It has 75 high quality vitamins in it, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. So if you're looking for a simple and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of their vitamin D and five free travel packs 
with your first purchase. So just go to athleticgreens.com backslash Danny. That's athleticgreens.com backslash Danny and go check it out today. So speaking of psychics, you know, this is a world that again, you know, um, if it wasn't, didn't you introduce me to Jesse? Yeah. You introduced me to Jesse. Yeah. That's right, you did. Yeah. He's which which Jesse's gonna marry us now, by the way. Like the No. Yeah. Way. Yeah. By the way, they see this is where you guys gotta understand. Like you're told that psychics are bad and this and that. Jesse's like, he's like my angel. Yeah. He's like in my deepest, darkest moments, I would be like, Jesse, just please tell me I'm gonna be like, you're fine. Everything's okay. You're the, he's you know, so good. he's just so wonderful. And yeah, I, I couldn't picture there i i just won't have it i will not have any other human being other than him marrying us because he wow. he was it's so interesting i'll tell you the story but she's not here to tell you this i'm i'm sure we'll tell you the story on our finding the one podcast but uh jen and i you know this uh were friends and we were friends for a long time i remember even talking to you about her yeah i was tuning in for you too you did that's yeah. right do you remember what you told me I told you a few things. I'm trying to remember what what. It, what I remember it? you were like, hmm. You, you knew nothing about her, and yeah. you were like, well, she's really pretty, huh? And I was like, yeah, yeah, she's really pretty. It was like, but she doesn't put value in that. Like, she's really connected to her heart. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's her. He's like, oh, this is good. You were like, this is almost like it's a done deal. It's just, it's just in you know, the process things of aligning. Have to move. Things yeah. just have to move. Other, but I feel really good about this. This is basically a done deal. Yeah, it's her. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting because it's like all of those little messages like really helped me on my journey. Because if you know, I was waiting for her for like three years, basically. But in one session, um, again, I, I know she wouldn't mind sharing this, but Jesse goes to her, you know, she had just broken up with her boyfriend. She had, she had, she was like home alone. She was just all by herself. She was like, you know, really like, you know, healing emotionally from this terrible break. The, uh, the way she explains it is, you know, or, life was basically a mess. And then she meets with Jesse and he's like, hmm. Are you open to getting married? And she was like, excuse me? She's like, yeah, I see you at a beautiful outdoor wedding. And, and she's like, my wedding? He's like, yeah. And it's like with the man of your dreams and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, sometimes those messages, you know, they, they help. And it's just so interesting to me that we live in a world that tries to block us from all these beautiful gifts that we have and that others have that could help us on our journey. How do we open ourselves up to maybe, you know, finding people with gifts that could be coming into our lives to help us on our journey in life? Like, I feel like I found you. You know, and I feel like I've found so many different people. How, how does one do that? Mm. Well, we're, we're all so connected. So asking you shall receive, right? And people forget to ask. And again, this, they took this out of the Bible. Asking, asking you shall receive is in the Bible. But the stuff right under it they took out is how to do it. And they say, let your mind and heart be one and envelop yourself in your desire. So what that means is, you know, your heart is a magnetic and your thoughts are electric. And they've done studies, right? Science proves this. When you combine the electromagnetic and you feel like it's already done, you put in your order, right? And that's faith, right? That's the science of faith. And so when we do that and then we get out of the way, we listen to our intuition, boom, magic happens every time. And the more that we open up, you know, first we're getting reflections from other people. And as we, we get confident and clear our own vessel, we start tuning in for ourselves more and more, you know, and that's the point to really source your inner knowing you know, which we're doing more and more. It's so interesting you mentioned that, but one day I was actually, I was speaking with Jesse and, and, I, and I, I was just like, I came to a place in my life where I thought to myself, like, what, what, why am I so blessed? You know, like, why am I so blessed? Like, I don't, I don't stress about anything. I just attracted the woman of my dreams. Um, I'm perfectly healthy and vibrant. Um, financially i'm squared away like everything is good like why why am i so why i almost felt like this is not fair mm. i was going through that i was like this is so i asked jesse i was like jesse what 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 the hell is this is this like 
I don't, I'm not special. I think everybody can have this, but why, why, why do I have it? He goes, it's simple because you just desired it. You're the only, you're, you're one of the rare people that actually believed and trusted that you could have whatever you want. Is it that simple? Is it like for anybody listening out there right now, is it, is it that simple? Is just mm. decide what you want and then allow it to, to all unfold. Totally. It, it, it isn't as, and it isn't because in a perfect world, you, you manifest instantly. That's how this realm works. And your subconscious is so much more powerful than your conscious mind. And because of the programming and our karmic past lives, right? We have these imprints, energetic, all these different levels. So we're counter manifesting. So people are, are asking for things, they're desiring it, and they're trying for years and they're getting blocked. And that's why I focus on helping people with that mm. because you got to clear the cruft out of the way. And you've done a lot of clearing too, sure. right? And as you clear, it becomes easier and easier. So I think that you're blessed because you've been blessing yourself and, and allowing yourself to just be you. So it's the more that you are yourself, right? And just reconnect with yourself, which is divine. Absolutely. Then the easier and faster it becomes. Absolutely. It's just like a rocket ship, right? It takes effort to get off the atmosphere and then the booster rockets. And then now you're in space and you're, you have that effortless operating system. Dude, that's how it feels. Yeah. It's, how it feels. it's so interesting because people even ask me like on social media, like people are like, how the hell did you do it? Like, what, what did you do? What, what, what did you, did you buy? Did you, and, and you know what my answer is? I just started to be me. I, I finally, in, in the de guys, in the depths of what that means, if, if you listen to the words, I just started to be me, take that to the infinite depths of what that really means to be you. And that's what I finally started to do. Like I finally just started to become, to be okay with who I am, with who I'm not, with what I have to say, with the fact that it might offend people, with the fact that it might do what it does, but in my heart, I know it's coming from the universal truth and wisdom that I've received in, in a lot of my journeys and a lot of these messages that I get. And I'm still calibrating, you know, and I'm still, you know, trying to like work it out. And sometimes my ego comes out and, you know, says things a little bit more aggressive than I should. And I understand that. But for the most part, for the most part, what started to happen is I just started to allow myself to be me. That's so beautiful. That's why we're doing all this work. It's really just reconnecting. That's it, man. Yeah. Talk to me about plant medicine. Mm. And for me, as you mentioned that word cruft, that's, that's the first time I've ever heard that word. It feels to me, as you said that, it's like, for me, what came is like, that's what helped you remove the cruft. Yeah, plant medicine was a, a big part of it. There's a, a lot of things I did and uh, plant medicine was a big part of it. And you know, I learned pretty quickly how to use it and how to not use it because there's, you know, a lot of people are just like, whoa, you get into it and you can definitely overuse it and not integrate it. Sure. But when done correctly, it's an extremely powerful tool. And I worked with all sorts of plant medicines, even very rare ones that most people have no idea mm. exist. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite ones was Iboga, which is from Africa. And, um, you know, before I trusted another human because I was so scared of anyone, right? This was this intelligence that spoke to me and it said, you know, it was like a life tutorial. It's like, this is what your voice is. Here's how to use your voice. Here's how to use your eyes. This is what you are. Here's what's happening in the world. And it started just recalibrating me into this new operating system and just clearing so many things because I was shown, you know, and like it showed me, like, I was like, what's my first, uh, you can ask a question, it'll show you that. It's like Google, but it's actually tr truth. And, you know, I was like, okay, what's the first um, traumatic memory I need to clear? And I thought it was going to be like three, my mom yelled at me or something. I'm seeing my parents, all of a sudden, boom, my parents making love in bed conceiving me and it was like this wasn't done intentionally i'm like whoa and like so that's, it's just like and it just goes deep, deep. it that's goes so deep, deep. it I goes know. so deep i know yeah i know so it's it's tools and it, you can use energy too to just show you these things because that's what i teach in my school um but there's many ways of doing it to just reveal right what you need to see because once you have two things you can heal anything it's awareness and compassion love right and when you combine those two right the electric and magnetic you can alchemize anything in a few minutes. I've had people, like I've tried this for 30 years, it's like past lives, five minutes later, it's completely healed. And so it's just about really looking at it from the right perspective, from God's eyes, from the That's divine right. perspective, That's right? right? Yeah. 
when you know when you say awareness and compassion, awareness and love, I think mind, heart. I also yeah. think masculine, feminine. Exactly. Would you would you agree with that? It's yeah, like, in a way, yeah. yeah. It's again balancing. No matter what gender you are, that's it. it. It just keeps coming back to balancing that, and you know that's what the ancient have taught us. And there, you know, there's actually different mystery schools, and and in some lifetimes you're meant to focus on one more than the other, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like in ancient Egypt, they had you know the feminine mystery school where it was like tantra and making love to all trying all these things and and being an oracle and then there was like the masculine and part of it was like you had to swim underwater caves with alligators and you know and really face your fears and do like really intense things you know so for me i've uh i've been doing a lot of both and and you know right now i'm definitely called to balance my my masculine more mm. and i'm doing like ancient medieval sword fighting here which you should try okay it's cool amazing okay cool and uh you know just getting deeper into that um because i've done a lot and but also the feminine you know like i'm starting to sing and play piano it just came out again recently i'm like wow beautiful so you know as you expand in, in each it's like a tree it's like the roots and the the branches it it creates you know such a beautiful picture you know? and, and why do you think it is that people have such a hard time with the words masculine and feminine Peace. well i think because some, some yeah. people have a charge with that in, in particular yeah. like i th i think like I'll, I'll let you answer i, I would love so, to hear so you know words are defined differently for different people and with the culture that's been weaponizing words and separating us from ourselves and other people, right? You know, you can associate man with, you know, man that was toxic or beat you. And now you're like, oh, all men have that subconsciously, at least, you know, you might not be aware of it. So, and then there's, you know, TV and then there's all these ideas now and, you know, oh, you know, the patriarchy and, you know, so there's all these, you know, um, overcompensations that happen to of judgment when it's really just like their energies. And yes, they've been, misused in this crazy history and you know they're pure energies that everyone is meant to play with in whatever way resonates and you're not meant you know, should do it in a certain way because you also have your unique affinities and preferences and sure. and soul purpose but they're energies that you can explore and play with and it's beautiful because magic happens when you play with them absolutely and when you align like both exactly in your in your unique way i think yeah 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 i love that you want to do a, a little, want to tap in and just see what comes Let's up? Let's do some magic. Yeah, yeah. Let's let them feel it. Okay. Let's let them see what this is like. So I'm going to, so I'm going to come to you, right? And yeah. just ask you, you know, what are you, what are you sensing for me? My message, you know, what, whatever it is that comes through. Um, I'll tell you, I don't know if you know this, but we're going to go have the baby in London now. We're mm. going to have it here. And, um, you know, which is going to be tough. I'm going to miss the kids, obviously, um, but it's it's what's best. It's what's best. So you know, what I don't know what comes through. I I just had a vision of like this tropical green place. So like after that, um, just just doing bigger events, having a bigger team, and expressing even new parts of yourself because you're already like so authentic. I don't know if it's uh, new parts of your voice or like creative gifts, but it's it's really just it feels like there's an expansion in, in the events you're doing yeah. from, from, you know, you're already making big events, but it's kind of like just going to like a whole new level and just branching out with even more things and layers. And uh, it just feels like a, just a golden age period for you, yeah. you know? Yeah, it feels like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's so funny? <laughs> right before you were here, Casper's laughing, right before you were here, um, my, my buddy Paul Austin was just here. Yeah, and and we oh he was just here you saw him we, we just, I saw him leave yeah yeah we saw him do the show you know what we were talking about no I, I'm not kidding you we were talking about I said I have an idea for an event and um, and I said what if we did an event that instead of three days like awaken it was five days right and it was like a way somewhere where this was yeah. obviously legal yeah but what if we did an event where we gave everyone a little microdose wow just that makes perfect market. sense is, yeah. is that what is it it's totally you know that's it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you just gave me that message so that that's is epic. in alignment guys we are having an event we're probably be on the ocean in mexico and colombia somewhere beautiful and Let's uh go. you know we're gonna do this it'll be powerful and you know what you need to come i would love to yeah you need to be there for that event yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll we're gonna we're gonna plan it it'll be a, a week long i already know the name of it it'll be called abundance Mm. It'll be like the next step above awaken. I love it. And yeah, we'll give it a big, just a little quarter, just a little something to just help them tap in. That's all you need. Yeah, and really just, boom. and this is the message that I got. Oh, that's energy. amazing. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Beautiful, beautiful. So, what do you do? How, what, what you know? If people want to 
discover more about you, learn more about you, work with you. You know, you're, you know, I, I, I hope you guys know that like, you know, if I say this is one of my trusted people, this is one of my trusted people, you can, you can trust this human being. What, what do you do? What do you, what do you specialize in helping people with? Yeah, I, I have a school called Dreamporting, a school of awakening. And uh, I have a couple main programs. Rapid Awakening is three months to just take you through the different levels of awakening, manifest your dreams, teach you how to use the universal laws to transform your life and create a more beautiful world. And, uh, and then I have a certification called Mastery, which is to teach you to do what I do. If you want to do it to yourself, to others, whether it's just friends or be a light worker, healer, coach to as many people as you want. So I certify people in that. Beautiful. And so uh, we have a lot of amazing masters and, and teachers that we bring in every week as well. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And, and how do people find out more about you or, you know? Yeah, you just go to dreamporting.com um, and you can follow me at Daniel Raphael one, number one. Yeah. And uh, I would love to connect. would love to uh, connect with more of your, your people. I love that, man. I love that. And I, we're going to end the podcast right now, but I want to just like hang on and talk a little bit more. We got to catch up. We have a lot of catching up to do. Um, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor being here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, for all of you listening, I want to, I want to challenge you to feel. I, I want to feel right now. And and feel the 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 vibration of the conversation and feel. feel like the energy of it because there's definitely a, an energy here, you know, and if you really tap into it, I'm sure that you can feel it as well. And I also want you to become aware and become aware of how often your mind tried to tell you maybe that what we were talking about was, you know, weird or wrong or whatever the case may be, but, but then tap, tap into what you feel, you know, tap into like, the beauty of two men speaking about spirituality. You know, I think that's very beautiful. Yeah. You know, and I don't think that that's very common and feel how, how, how safe it felt and how natural it felt and how like non pushy it felt. It just, it just was, it just was, it just is just like life. It just is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and sit with that and sit with that feeling and, uh, and maybe maybe close your eyes and meditate for a little bit and just kind of tap in and see, you know, as source, as universe, you know, show me truth, you know, help me awaken. And I can promise you this, the minute you ask that, get ready because the journey will begin. Uh -huh. will begin. Yeah. We'll see you next week on another episode of The Higher Self. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. If you heard something in this week's episode that caused you to think maybe, just maybe, there was a higher potential for your life. Maybe there was a potential to earn and receive financial freedom, to attract the relationship of your dreams, or to improve your health. That's what we specialize in. We help wonderful human beings like yourself to unravel all of the limiting thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you've been living through so that you can finally tap into your life's truest potential. If you'd like to talk more about that, we invite you to join us on Instagram or Facebook and email us the word discover more. And when my team sees that, they will reach out to you, send you the details of how we could help you on your pathway to a life of abundance, fulfillment, and creating the absolute life of your dreams. Message us right now, the words discover more now on Instagram or Facebook, and we'll see you soon.